Hello and welcome to this episode of Luminar News. My name is Jacob Bors and I'm here to bring you up to speed with the latest Luminar updates. Just before we're going to start, I want to remind you to subscribe to our channel to make sure that you don't miss one of our future episodes or updates. Skylum released new update for Luminar Neo, this time with number 1.5.1. This update is focusing on improvements throughout the software. In this video, we're going to look at all the updates. Then I'm going to show you how to make sure that you're running the latest version of Luminar Neo and if you're not, how to install it. And at the end, we're going to jump into the application and I will show you where to find and how to use all the news and updates. Now, Luminar Neo update 1.5.1 is here to bring you even better experience. The Super Sharp AI extension now has the universal mode that tackles blur and delivers vivid and sharp results. Also, you can now export RAW files a bit faster with full rendering. Additionally, the memory usage for Undo and Redo tool with brushes and the Clone and Stamp tool has been optimized, so it's performing much better. There is also better refinement in Portrait Background and Background Removal AI tools, which means you can clearly see the remove background when you editing. On top of that, Skylum fixed a number of bugs, so Luminar Neo works even more smoothly. Now, as always, if you want to see the full list of the updates for Windows and Mac machines, just head to the Skylum website at skylum.com slash what's new slash Luminar Neo. Before we're going to continue, I want to mention that this episode of Luminar Neo News is powered by our Luminar Neo Power Bundle. For a little fee, you will get over 986 new elements to power up your Luminar Neo tools. You will get extra high definition skies, overlays, textures, backgrounds, sky objects, LUTs and presets. All of this will help you to transform your images with just a few clicks. To get the best price and the best discount, simply follow the link in the description of this video or visit our website cleverphotographer.com. And now it's time to make sure that we are running the latest version of Luminar Neo. So how are we going to do this? Well, as you can see, we are already in Luminar Neo and we are in a catalog module. If you are not in a catalog module, just hit C on your keyboard or click on catalog on the top of your screen. From here, navigate to the top left corner of your screen and click on the Luminar Neo logo. From the drop down list, simply select the About Luminar Neo, which will open a new window in the center of your screen. Here you can very simply see what version of Luminar Neo you're running and in my case you can see it's the older version 1.5.0. So this means I need to install the update. So let's close this window and go back to the Luminar Neo logo in the top left corner of the screen. Click on it again and choose the check for updates. Once it's run, it opens a new window which will tell us that we need to install new update. For this, simply click on this little button and continue. Now it's going to start to download and extract the update. Depending on the speed of your broadband and internet, this may take few seconds or few minutes. Once it's done, it will prompt you with a new message where you're going to be able to install and update the application. Click on the little button and then very simply wait until the application install the update and reset. Now we are back in Luminar Neo, everything is updated and all we want to do is to double check that the version is right. So for this, you already know the way, navigate back to the top left corner of the screen, click on the Luminar Neo logo, click on about Luminar Neo and just double check that the version is now 1.5.1. Once you're done, you can close this window and continue editing. And now it's finally time to look at the actual news and updates directly in Luminar Neo. We're going to start with the Super Sharp AI extension and its new universal mode. 
So first of all, SuperSharp AI is a paid professional extension available for Luminar Neo. If you haven't installed it yet, all you need to do is to go into the catalog module in your application and then navigate towards the new extension button in the top right corner of your screen. It also has an orange puzzle icon and when you click on it, it will open the extension main window. Once it opens, this is a place where you can look for the extensions and where you can install it. The SuperSharp AI is a sixth on the list and as you can see, I already have it installed. However, you would just come here and click on install to get it available for your application. Well, once it's installed, we can close this and we can just select the sample file here. We're going to be working on this and then move into our edit module. We can do that by clicking on edit on the top of the screen or hitting E on our keyboard. Now, this is an image from Greece and it's already quite sharp. So what we're going to be using the super sharp AI for is just to add a little more texture and details in all the areas to really get the texture stand out. To do this, we're going to navigate towards our main toolbar, go into the extension section and under the noiseless AI, we have the super sharp AI extension. Click on it to open it and here in the drop down box after the motion blur, we also have the universal. So the motion blur is great for these images where you have the motion blur uh, where you need to adjust and fix that. And universal is available just to really add little punch into your image. Now let's zoom into 100% and we can do that by clicking on the zoom option on the bottom of our screen and selecting the 100% and let's just move around to see how much we need. Looking at it once again, it's quite sharp already. So what we're going to go for is just the middle option. So all you need to do is to go back to the main toolbar and select the middle once you select the universal in a drop down box. Now the application or the extension will start to scan the image and then apply the sharpening based on its AI findings. Depending on the size and the resolution of your image, this may be going to take few seconds to few minutes. Once the extension is finished, it will gray out the option we selected and it will make the image available for further editing. So let's just zoom out and have a look at the before and after. We can do that by hitting the little eye icon in the top right corner of the tool, or we can use the eye icon at the bottom of our screen. Since we haven't applied any other edits, we can just use the preview at the bottom of our screen and see the before and after. Now let's zoom in, let's say to this area, and maybe we can zoom in even further for that. We can use command plus and let's have a look at the before and after. And you can see really how the details stand out. Let's have a look at the roof here, how the texture is much more dominant and the picture is a little bit more vivid and alive. Now, of course, depending on the result, you can then choose additional options. You can try the low or high. It really depends what you prefer. Additionally, don't forget that you can use the masking and you can do that if you, for example, want to apply the sharpening only to the land and leave the sea alone. How would you do this? Really simple. You could just quickly jump into the masking and here use any of the options like brush, gradients or mask AI. So let's select the brush and very quickly just erase the parts of the water. For this, we need to click on erase. We can adjust the size of our brush leave the softness on 100 and with the strength on, let's say somewhere between 70 or 80. And now we can very quickly just paint over the parts where we don't want the sharpening to be applied. So just very quickly here, let's have a look, something like this. And once we finish, that's it. So now we can go back and go back to the adjustments and see the before and after. And now you can see how it's applied only to the parts of the land. The update number two is focusing on the speed of exporting from a raw files with some adjustment made to it. 
So what we're going to do, we're going to select the raw file here. Let's just click on it and let's have a look at the details of the image. You can see that it's an image captured by Sony a7R Mark IV. Uh, I used 24 to 105 millimeter lens. It's a full size 6000 to 9000 pixels, 59 megapixel size of an image. It's a raw file and we're just going to quickly select it and move it into edit module where I want to show you that I already applied some editing to it. For that, we're going to go into the main toolbar, click on the edits, and you can see I have a full list of different edits I applied to the image, so we can test the speed of the exporting. Let's just close this, and let's quickly double check the before and after. So you can see how much edits I applied to this image, and now we want to see how much faster is the export. To export an image, we just right click on the image and select export here. And let's go ahead and try to export two formats. Let's start first of all with JPEG. For this, we need to make sure that we are on our export setting, sharpening on none, resize on the original. And in the format, we're going to go into the JPEG. Let's go for the full quality, no other adjustments. You can select the name of the file. So let's say we're going to call it JPEG test and then we just click on save. So the export is done and to export full quality JPEG from a raw file that had over 13 edits applied to it, it took 17 seconds on my computer. Now let's try the same with the TIFF file and measure it again. So again, we right click on the image, click on export and this time we're going to go into the setting and instead of JPEG, we're going to go into the TIFF. And let's say that we're going to go into the 16 bits, 240 pixels per inch. We're not going to want to choose the transparency. And let's call this TIFF test. Once again, now let's just click on save and see how long it's going to take to export the image. And we are finished again. And to export 16 bit TIFF file from RAW file with 13 edits, it took 12 seconds on my machine. So I can definitely say that there is a visible improvement on the speed of exporting images out of RAW files with many edits on them. Now the update number three is focusing on optimizing the undo and redo option for brushes and clone and stamp tool. Unfortunately, there is no way for me to show you how to do that. So we're going to move to the next option and I hope that you will be able to see the improvement and optimization on your own machines. So finally, we're going to look at the update number four, focusing on better refinement for the portrait background and background removal AI tools. For this, we're going to use this sample file, select it and move it into edit module. In the edit module, we're going to navigate into the layer properties and in the layer properties, click on masking. I know that not all of you have the background removal AI tool. So let's just use the portrait background. Click on it and the AI will start to scan the image and select the person. Once it's finished, we can now click on remove and it will take few seconds to remove the background from the person. Once this is over, we could now replace the background or refine the result. If you want to see the full tutorial on how to use this tool, we have it available on our YouTube channel and I will link it in the corner of this video. Now to refine the mask and the background removal, we can just click on refinements brush. And as you can see, now we can easily see the removed background. We can see the transition part and also the object. Now we could use the brushes like transition, object and background to play around with the tool and with the visibility improved, it is a little bit easier now to refine the selection and refine the background that's going to be removed. This works the same for the portrait background removal tool as well as the background removal AI. And that's all the news for today. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our future news or updates. For today, thank you very much for watching. My name was Jacob Bors and I can't wait to see you in the next video.